What's up guys? Welcome back to Philly Cheese Gaming. My name is Philip, but you can call me Philly Cheese. Today I've got a brand new character build guide for you. In the grim darkness of 2287, there is only war. And all too often, the fate of the entire human race rests on the massive, armored shoulders of the mighty Space Marines. That's right, we're gonna make a Warhammer 40k style Space Marine in Fallout 4. As with all of my builds, we're going to define the character and the target playstyle and then we'll go over the special stats, perks, and equipment you'll need to achieve that playstyle. We'll then wrap up with a hearty discussion on role-playing the Space Marine, because there are a lot of fun opportunities to do so within this game. Unlike my previous character guide, which was more of an adaptation of a high-level character I had already beaten the game with, I purpose-built my Space Marine character from the ground up, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to do the same. So strap on your power armor, say a prayer of thanks to the Emperor of Mankind, and prepare yourself to meet the mighty Space Marine. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennia, there is only war. Spread thin across the vast reaches of the galaxy, mankind is constantly under threat from evil aliens like the Eldar, Necrons, and Orcs, as well as the heretics who worship the demons of chaos. Standing against all these threats are the ranks of the Battle Brothers, the mighty Space Marines. Space Marines are absolute tanks on the battlefields of Warhammer 40k. They are genetically engineered super soldiers who aggressively seek out and eradicate the many enemies of mankind using hulking power armor and powerful weapons. Space Marine infantry comes in three varieties. The standard tactical marine is equally skilled with rifle and blade. The devastator marines use heavy weapons to blast their targets into oblivion from afar. And the third variant, the assault marines, make use of jump packs to quickly swoop in and rip enemies to shreds with their devastating chain weapons. We're going to use the systems of Fallout 4 to encompass all three of these brutal playstyles, and I have to say that after playing a sneaky stealth-based character like my Sam Fisher build, the Space Marine is a ton of fun. He's very powerful and in your face, and he uses a lot of guns in melee, so you're going to experience a lot of what the combat in Fallout 4 has to offer with this character. As I've said, it's heaps of fun to play, and the Space Marines have held a special place in my heart since I discovered Warhammer 40k in college. Their strength, perseverance, and dedication to duty are all traits that I personally find very inspiring, even if I don't necessarily agree with all of their ideology. But more on that later. It's time to start building our Space Marine. There are two roads to take when creating your appearance for the Space Marine. You can create the fresh recruit sort of Marine with a strong, clear face and a military haircut, or you can do what I did. I decided to go in a different direction and create a Space Marine who's been around the galaxy a time or two and has the scars to prove it. As a veteran, he's cultivated a more classically heroic look with longer blonde hair. Think Hercules in space. When it comes to names, you'll want something with a Roman or Gothic sort of feel to it, like Maximus or Corvus. I went with Tiberius. When it comes time to choose your special stats, we'll want to take 10 strength, 1 perception, 4 endurance, 1 charisma, 8 intelligence, 2 agility, and 2 luck. We will be grabbing the Your Special Book in Sanctuary and using that on Intelligence to bring it up to 9. And you'll also want to be sure to grab the Perception Bobblehead in the room where you first meet Preston Garvey to bring your Perception up to 2. Upon exiting Vault 111, the Space Marine will follow the main quest line. He will set off for Diamond City after receiving intel from Mama Murphy that clues to his son may be found there. But upon intercepting the Brotherhood distress call on the radio, he will quickly head for the Cambridge Police Station and begin following the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. You will eventually have to make your way to Diamond City and complete the main story quests up through reunions in order to gain access to the Brotherhood's flying fortress, the Pridwin. This will also unlock additional Brotherhood quests. With 9 intelligence, the Space Marine will be leveling up quickly, so let's get into our perk selections for the first 15 levels. The first time we level up, we're going to take Scrounger. Now I know what you're saying. Philly Cheese, we're building a tank character, and you're not starting off with a damage perk? But we're going to be working up to using a lot of heavy weapons, so the sooner we take Scrounger and start hoarding things like 5mm and 45 ammo, the better. The damage perks come soon. At level 3, we're going to take Big Leagues to increase our melee damage by 20%, and then at level 4, we'll take Riflemen to do the same to our damage with non-automatic rifles. Melee and rifles are going to be the bread and butter of the Space Marine. Next off, for level 5, we're going to take Nuclear Physicist, which will make our fusion cores last 25% longer. 
you're going to want to be wearing power armor almost constantly, so this perk is a must. At level 6, we're going to take Pain Train, which will allow us to sprint into enemies with our power armor, dealing damage and stunning them. Basically, you want to soften up your targets with rifle fire, and then charge in and finish them off with melee. It's brutal, effective, and lots of fun. Next up, at level 7, we'll be taking Armorer, and this will allow us to start upgrading our power armor. At level 8, we'll be taking Heavy Gunner, which will increase our damage with heavy weapons by 20%, and you can now consider yourself a Devastator. After that, at level 9, we'll be taking Rooted for the increase in damage resistance while standing still. Try and resist the urge to strafe around when shooting at your targets, and you'll be able to soak up more fire. This also helps in melee standoffs when facing your opponent and trading blows back and forth. At level 10, we're going to take Gun Nut, and at level 11, we're going to take Science. These will allow us to start upgrading our arsenal of ballistic and energy rifles, and at level 12 we'll be taking Blacksmith to do the same with our melee weapons. We're going to turn right back around at level 13 and take the next rank of Gun Nut for even more mod options, and at level 14 we're going to take the second rank of Scrounger to find even more ammo in containers and on corpses in the wasteland. You should start finding more useful ammo types now. Finally, at level 15 you are free to choose between any of the three damage perks we have already invested in to upgrade. I'd recommend either Riflemen or Big Leagues, as you'll be primarily using rifles in melee, and heavy weapons are strong enough without upgrading Heavy Gunner, especially this early in the game. After level 15, you're free to follow whatever perk progression you want, but I recommend continuing to build upon the perks we've already chosen. If you wanted to invest one more point into Intelligence, you can do so and then take Nerd Rage, which would add a potent safety net for the Space Marine, but probably wouldn't activate that often, as our power armor will keep us relatively healthy. You can also throw some points into luck and take Bloody Mess for a damage boost that will affect all your weapons. Investing points in endurance to increase your overall health is always a good idea. The equipment choices in Fallout 4 actually allow us to emulate the Space Marines' iconic weaponry pretty well. Also, the way they did power armor in this game really reminds me of Warhammer 40k, and that's actually what gave me the idea for this build in the first place. You'll want to wear power armor all the time and upgrade it whenever possible. I like to take my helmet off when I'm in town or likely to be talking to people, but that choice is entirely yours. You can actually favorite the helmet and assign it to the D-pad, but this will only allow you to equip it, not take it off again. Still, it's helpful for when a fight breaks out that maybe you weren't expecting and you need to slap your helmet back on. To conserve your fusion cores, only sprint in short bursts to activate Pain Train, and only use vats and your headlamp whenever necessary. Always do search military checkpoints for fusion cores, and keep your eye out for generator rooms that contain them as well. Once we have the final rank of Scrounger, we will have a chance to find fusion cores and containers, and this will help a lot. Underneath our power armor, we will want the Brotherhood of Steel uniform and leather or metal armor until we can get our hands on some combat armor. When it comes to weapons, use whatever you find effective until you can get your hands on a combat rifle, a machete, and a laser rifle. If you follow my advice and immediately begin the Brotherhood quest line, you'll get a legendary laser rifle called Righteous Authority pretty quickly, and you can carry this with you through the rest of the game. The machete we will rename a combat knife because it's about the right size for what the Space Marines carry as their backup melee weapon. I know, a machete is a knife. I told you these guys were tanks. The combat rifle will be modified with a short barrel and large magazine to resemble the Space Marines' signature battle rifle, the Holy Bolter. I'd also recommend the sight ring or a reflex sight on this bad boy, and put the most powerful receiver on it that you can. This will be your primary weapon, and you should be able to find plenty of 45 ammo in the waste to keep it fed. In Warhammer 40k, the Bolter fires explosive rounds, so if we can get our hands on a legendary combat rifle with the explosive modifier, it would be absolutely perfect. I haven't found one yet, but here's hoping. Later on in the game, we're going to add in a ripper with the curved or extended modifier and call it a chain axe or chain sword, depending on your mod preference and always carry a missile launcher and a minigun for hordes and stronger boss type enemies. Plasma rifles make a nice late game option as well, but you will always want to be upgrading and using your bolter. Once you have the ability, you can put a jetpack on your power armor, and at this point you can consider yourself an assault marine. You can use impact landings and the pain train perk to stun or knock down your enemies and then shred them with your chain axe or chop them to bits with your combat knife. Now let's talk for a bit about role playing and factions for the Space Marine. Obviously, we're going to be siding with the Brotherhood of Steel for this playthrough, and they offer a lot of role playing opportunities for this build. In the traditional alignment system, the Space Marine would be seen as lawful neutral. He follows a strict code that is neither inherently good nor evil. The Space Marine will follow the Brotherhood code of ideals to the letter, as this very closely matches his own. 
His favorite method of problem solving is force. The Space Marine hates synths and sees them as an abomination and a threat to mankind, and sees the railroad as traitors and heretics. Super mutants are to be referred to as orcs, and they really fit the part with their mannerisms and even their appearance. Orcs are to be exterminated. I'm talking to you, Virgil and Strong. Ghouls are mutants and must be purged from the wasteland, whether or not they are feral. Those ghoul farmers with the tarberry pool won't know what hit them. Raiders are heretics and followers of chaos, and as such are to be destroyed without hesitation or mercy. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Gunners look a lot like Imperial Guardsmen from Warhammer 40k and would typically be allies of the Space Marines, but in this case, they have been swayed by the whisperings of chaos and must be exterminated. Burn the unclean! When your battle brothers greet you with Ad Victorium, respond with For the Emperor. Once you start viewing the game through this lens, it really feels like you're playing a Warhammer 40k game, and you're just on some distant planet ruined by radiation. I like to call it Fallout 40k, but that's just me. And there you have it. I've said it before, but I had a lot of fun creating and playtesting this build for you guys. And you can expect some more Space Marine love on my channel in the future. I'm something of a fan, in case you hadn't noticed. Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the build. Is it something you'd be interested in trying out for yourself? Is there something you would have done differently in your own Space Marine build? And as always, be sure to like and subscribe so everyone can see on your page that you were into Philly Cheese Gaming before it was popular. This is Philly Cheese, signing off. So, you murdered my wife. Took my son. You're a dead man. Ah! Ah!